Analysts at Citigroup expect silver to reach as high as $40 an ounce over the next 12 months, another 60% from here. And Goldman Sachs thinks we may be heading into another commodities super cycle. If that happens, we could see gold and silver prices surge from here. In this video, I'll show you why prices for precious metals are heading higher this year and reveal seven penny stocks to put in your portfolio for those leveraged returns. We're talking gold mining penny stocks today on Let's Talk Money. Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here with the Let's Talk Money channel. I want to send a special shout out to all you out there in the nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. Nation, while the price of precious metals has come down lately, we could be just starting a decade-long boom in gold and silver prices. The price of gold was up 23% last year and 81% off its 2015 lows. Beating that, the price of silver surged 53% in the last year alone. Analysts at Citigroup expect silver to reach as high as $40 an ounce over the next 12 months. That's another 60% from here. And Goldman Sachs, for its part, thinks we may be heading into another commodity super cycle. The last such cycle in the decade to 2012 saw the price of gold jump almost 600% over the period, blowing past the financial crisis like a hiccup. And it's really all based on two factors that are driving these prices higher. Expectations for inflation rose to a two-year high last week, with analysts expecting prices to rise 2% over the next year and possibly head even higher. The other factor, but related to that, is the weakening US dollar, which is already down 12% against the other major currencies and expected to fall at least another 10% this year. Nation, nearly $7 trillion in stimulus spending saved our butts from another Great Depression, but you can't just throw that much money at the economy and not expect there to be consequences. Those consequences are just starting to come home, and it could mean gold and silver prices zoom higher this year. Now, we've talked about owning the physical gold and the silver coins before on the channel, but you out there in the nation know I like the miners better. When prices are rising, the miners can use that financial leverage to magnify the effects, really boosting profits to create a higher return. And now when you're talking about those gold and silver mining stocks, the heavyweights like Newmont and Barrett Gold can do well, but they can't touch the returns you're going to get from those undiscovered penny stock miners, those pre-production and developmental stage explorers. So that's what I want to focus on today, looking at those penny stocks, silver, and gold miners with the most potential to turn that commodity super cycle into profits for your portfolio. Now do remember though, these are highly risky companies. Not only do they lack the financial leverage of the established players like Newmont, most of these have all their assets tied up in just a few projects, so it's feast or famine depending on those sites. First tier and smallest of the group, $47 million Silver Dollar Resources, ticker SLVDF on the US exchanges and ticker SLV in Canada. Silver Dollar's flagship asset is the La Jolla Project in Mexico, where the latest drilling revealed significant mineralization, 15 of 17 holes, including nearly 1,800 grams per ton of silver equivalent. The company recently closed a $10.5 million financial financing around with lead orders from Eric Sprott and First Majestic Silver to advance the project. The team is being led by Perry Durning and Bud Hillemeyer, geologists with 87 years of exploration between the two and the experience with big miners like BHP and Hecla Mining. Silver Dollar also has two projects in Canada near Red Lake, an area that has produced over 29 million ounces of gold projects back to the 30s. So the company has solid exploration potential, strong financial backing. Eric Sprott owns 19% of the shares and First Majestic Silver owns another 16% of the company. In fact, insiders alone hold 41% of the total shares issued. 2021 could be a very good year, and this is one of my favorites from the list, so I'll leave a link to the investor presentation in the description below. Avino Silver and Gold Mines, ticker ASM, is the oldest company on our list with 35 years of production and a $128 million market cap. Avino owns three properties, the Eagle and Minto projects in Canada and its main site, the Avino Mine in Mexico. The COVID shutdowns and a strike at Avino weighed on production last year, but the company is estimating 2021 production as high as 2.8 million ounces, which would take it back up near the 2018 peak. Shares have jumped fourfold off the March low, but could have another 40 or 50% upside if it hits this year's production targets. The company has a strong balance sheet with $12.5 million in cash against just $4 million in debt and a cash cost of $12.56 per ounce. That's less than half the current price on silver. Tosico Mines, ticker TGB in the US and TKO in Canada, just recently broke above my $350 million market cap screener where, where I like to stay under for penny stocks, 
but has, still has that penny stock potential in the company. Now, Tosico is a copper miner, but if we are heading into that commodity super cycle, and if we do hit the 5% GDP growth this year, you definitely want exposure to those industrial metals along with gold and silver. The company is also further along than some of the others on our list, already producing out of its Gibraltar mine. It's got near-term development in Florence, Arizona, as well as three longer-term projects in Canada. On top of 60,000 tons of production with a remaining life of 18 years at Gibraltar, the Florence and other projects could add another 125,000 tons of production and add a cash cost as low as $1.13 per pound. The price of copper has jumped 65% from its low last March to $3.50 a pound and should keep building on that economic rebound. Hey nation, if you haven't yet signed up to get the daily bow tie, look for the link in the video description below. It's my daily market newsletter with all the important news, stock market trends, and what to watch delivered straight to your inbox the night before so you have time to plan. It's your opportunity to be a smarter investor in less than five minutes a day. This is something completely new for this year. It's something I've been wanting to do for you out there in the community for a long time, and it's totally free, so look for that link in the description below. Galliano Gold, ticker GAU, is one of our few profitable penny stock miners. The company operates the Asanko Gold Mine in West Africa, with 251,000 ounces mined in 2019, and a market cap just under $300 million. Management is guiding to 245 thousand ounces for this year and at an all-in sustaining cost, that AISC of $1,150 per ounce, which at the current price of gold of $2,000 an ounce leaves a lot of room for profit. But why I like this one, on top of that low cost production, management is finding ways to keep those costs down and even lower them further. Mining costs were lowered 25% in the first nine months of last year versus 2019, and I think the company can come in under that 1150 per ounce AISC estimate. Another pre-production miner here, Paramount Gold Nevada, ticker PZG, is exploring on two assets in Oregon and Nevada. The company's Grassy Mountain, Oregon project completed a feasibility study last September to estimate 390,000 ounces of proven and probable gold reserves. The company estimates an initial capex cost of $98 million to start producing and then average annual free cash flows of $35 million a year. Then the Sleeper Gold project in Nevada is estimated to have over 3 million measured and indicated ounces of gold with an initial capex of $175 million and production life of 9 years. With gold at $2,000 an ounce and silver at $25, the company estimates a 52% rate of return on this project, and it's profitable even if gold slips to $1,500 an ounce. Now, the company's balance sheet isn't quite as strong here, with just $4.5 million in cash against $5 million in debt, but major shareholders hold 27% of the shares, including three larger miners, so it shouldn't have any funding problems to develop these mines. Gold Resource Corporation, ticker GORO, is one of the few penny stock miners here that actually pays a dividend. The company has over a decade in production and $130 million in annual revenues, with nine consecutive years of profitability through 2019. Gold Resource owns six high-grade gold and silver properties in Oaxaca, Mexico, with two of the mines already in operation. On 2019 sales of $135 million, the company reported a profit of $0.09 cents per share and an all-in sustaining cost of production of just $646 per ounce, one of the lowest in the industry. Now, total estimated proven and probable reserves at the projects is 2.8 million tons of gold equivalent, and the company has over $36.5 million in balance sheet cash against no debt, so this one is just going to be a cash flow machine. Monarch Gold, ticker MRQRF, is a Canadian miner with four projects in the Abitibi Greenstone Belt. Now, of these projects, Wasamic is in development, and the Beaufort mine is in maintenance, but can be brought back into production without any special permitting. Monarch recently closed a 13 $15 million financing round and sold its Faoli project to IM Gold for $11.5 million. So with $30 million in balance sheet cash and no debt on the books, the company has the finances to take these projects into production. The company estimates 1.8 million ounces of proven and probable reserves at its Wasamic project alone, with permitting underway and profitability on gold as low as $1,300 an ounce. Now, at an all-in sustaining cost of just $630 an ounce, it's one of the lowest cost producers in Canada. Click on the video to the right for the top five penny stocks I'm watching for 2021 for those triple digit returns. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.